In this video, we will discuss about random variables. We begin by describing an experiment, which is uh, a task uh, that can be repeated. Uh, it has a bunch of uh, well-defined outcomes. Examples of experiments would be tossing a coin, uh, drawing a ball from a bag containing balls, or choosing two random students from this class. In each of these cases, the experiments have some well-defined outcomes, right? Uh, for example, in the case of a coin toss, the outcomes would be either a head or a tails. When we draw a ball from a bag containing balls, an outcome would be the drawn ball. In the case when we choose two random students from the class, an outcome would be a pair of students from this class. Given an experiment, the sample space is the set of all possible outcomes uh, of this experiment. For example, in the case of the coin toss, all possible outcomes were either heads or tails. When we draw a ball from a bag, all possible outcomes are all possible unique balls in the bag. And when we choose two random students from this class, all possible outcomes are all possible pairs of students in this class. In practice, given an experiment, we are not usually interested in all possible outcomes, but certain properties associated with the outcome. We use random variables to make this idea precise. A random variable is a real valued function whose domain is the set of all outcomes of an experiment. That is, uh, x is a function going from the sample space of an experiment to the set of real numbers. Depending on the values or the image of x, the random variable, uh, uh, the random variable can generally be classified into one of two types, which would be either discrete or continuous. Discrete random variables take uh, values that form a discrete subset of R, the real numbers, and uh, continuous random variables will have values that contain at least one non-trivial interval in R. When working with discrete random variables, most calculations will usually involve finite or infinite sums. Uh, on the other hand, uh, dealing with continuous random variables would require us to use differential and integral calculus uh, when calculating quantities related to these random variables. Next, we define the probability mass function for a discrete random variable, which calculates the probability that the random variable is going to take the value small x which is described as follows. In the context of continuous random variables, we define what is known as the probability density function. This is a function f of x that is defined on the set of all real numbers, and it will essentially help us calculate the probability that the random variable lies between the points a and b. Uh, this probability is calculated by computing the integral a to b fx dx. An important property of a continuous random variable is that the probability that the random variable is going to take a fixed value c is always going to be zero. We next talk about the expected value of a random variable. Let script x denote the set of all values of x. Then the expected value of x or the mean value of x uh, when x is discrete is the sum x times px, where x varies over script x. When x is continuous, the expected value is the integral from minus infinity to infinity of x times fx dx. The variation of x from its mean, or the variance of x, is the expected value of x minus mu x, the whole squared. Uh, this is the following sum where mu x is the expected value of x. To compute the variance for a continuous random variable, we calculate the integral from minus infinity to infinity of x minus mu x whole squared. 
fx dx. Just to look back uh, what we have done so far, uh, two types of random variables and their expected value and variance. To finish up this video, I will briefly wo work through an example in the discrete case. So suppose we have a bag that contains 10 identical balls, except for the color. Uh, suppose there are seven blue balls and three red balls. And the experiment involves drawing three balls with replacement. The sample space is of uh, size nine and the outcomes in the sample space are as follows. We now define a random variable which will count the number of blue balls in a given outcome. Notice that since uh, there are exactly three balls drawn, uh, we could either have zero blue, blue balls, one blue ball, two blue balls, or three blue balls in a given outcome. As a result, uh, the values of x can either be zero, one, two, or three. The sets corresponding to each of these values are as follows. The probabilities for each of these outcomes can be calculated as follows. For all three reds, we will get 3 over 10 cubed. And all the other probabilities are calculated as follows. We can summarize all of these probabilities into what is known as the distribution table, where the first row of the distribution table is going to correspond to the values of x, and the second row corresponds to the probability that x takes the given value. We can now calculate the expected value of this random variable. It is going to be the sum of all x over script x of x times px. Plugging in the values into the sum, we get and simplifying, we get the expected value as 3 times 7 over 10. To calculate the variance, we use the respective formula. And after a bunch of elementary but not necessarily easy manipulations, we arrive at the following answer, which is 3 times 7 over 10 times 3 over 10. Some of you might have already noticed that x is indeed a known random variable. That is, x will be a binomial random variable with parameters n equals 3 and p equals 7 over 10. Also, recall that in the case of binomial random variables, there is a nice formula for the expected value which is given as n times p, and the variance is given by n times p times q, where q is 1 minus p. This completes the example and this video. We'll be talking about random variables a lot, uh, but for now, this is all. Thank you very much, and I will see you around. Take care.